This project has been up and running since 2008 and one of the most important things I think that we do is to bring the research that has been done by the OU Grasslands team to um, conservation practitioners, people that manage floodplain meadows, landowners that own floodplain meadows. We write a newsletter, we run conferences, we organise workshops, but I think probably the most valuable thing that we do is attend site visits. So we organise to go to sites, we bring some of the scientists along to sites and then we talk through what the issues are. Uh, we walk around, we look at the plants uh, and we can interpret what those plants are telling us about the hydrology. Based on the discussions that we have, very often site managers will then change the management that's going on on the site. And that's a really valuable thing for me to know that we're actually making a difference in terms of the data that we collect. We were looking at how we were managing our hay here, what time we were taking the hay, and we were aware that perhaps we weren't um, managing it as best we could. And our particular concern was that in 2007 the site was flooded during the summer and uh, 50 hectares of this land is a national nature reserve and that particularly suffered uh, during those floods and so we wanted to look at how we could restore those meadows and um, we realised the importance of being able to make our haymaking operation a sort of financially viable. So it wasn't just good enough to cut them um, and for ecological reasons it's important to have those sort of economic drivers in there too to make the whole thing sustainable. This is a site called Chimney Meadows National Nature Reserve in Oxfordshire. We're actually sitting in a restoration meadow which was created by the Wildlife Trust by spreading green hay. Um, the, um, the plants are just going to seed now, so as soon as the weather allows it, they'll be coming on here to cut the hay, store it in their nice new barn over there, and then sell it on or use it for their cattle over the winter. Last year it took us two months to cut hay across this whole site. It's 110 hectares of hay we have to do. Uh, so it's you know quite a big uh, operation we have here. And um, very much the, their recommendation was in terms of restorative management, you get on early, you take the, the sort of the material off um, earlier than we would we were doing. And, and so in terms of how it specifically changed our practice, we've since bought ourselves some equipment, a couple of hay bobs and a haymaking trailer and we have staff and volunteers trained up, ready to use the equipment. So we do our own turning of our hay now and produces a much better quality product. Horse owners uh, have been approaching us and, and horse, um, horses can be quite fussy about the quality of the hay, but horse owners are now coming to us and wanting to buy that product. So really, in terms of the knock-on, from simply reading a newsletter and talking to staff at the Floodplain Meadows Partnership, we have substantially changed our practices here. Since I've been involved with the Floodplain Meadow Partnership our practice has changed as we're trying to recreate floodplain meadows across Northamptonshire. There's only about a thousand hectares left in the whole country and the three sites that we're working on at the moment uh, each will add about one percent to that national total. Uh, we're feeding back information to the Floodplain Meadow Partnership and they're giving us information about how the meadows are developing, uh, how to manage them, what to do next, because we're developing them from bought in seed in Northamptonshire because we don't have a source of green hay. So they are quite different to other sites. For us, our big success here is that we took 70 hectares of land that was um, arable. We've um, taken the hay from the National Nature Reserve, green hay, and we've strewed it across this land. And now we have 70 hectares of meadows that just didn't exist before. And again, in terms of how the Floodplain Meadows Partnership have helped us, they um, surveyed those meadows in the first place and on the National Nature Reserve so that we knew where we were taking the best hay from. And then they've come in again this year and they've uh, resurveyed those meadows, sort of post flooding, just to see how the National Nature Reserve is getting on. But, you know, as for success, I think it speaks for itself around us 70 hectares of land that's now meadow and wasn't. Since I've been working on this project, I've come to realise that floodplain meadows are the most amazing places for wildlife. They're absolutely packed full of different plants and 
animals and grasses and flowers. And one of the really interesting things for me is that those, all those different grasses and flowers tell a different story. Some of them have got medicinal and herbal uses, some of them are really important for feed quality, some of them just look fantastic, some of them are really iconic to the local communities that they live in, for example the Snake's Head Fritillaries where wherever you go where fritillaries are found the local community have got some kind of festival or a local name for it. And so I think the thing that floodplain meadows represent to me is a reflection of their ancient history and the community that they're found within.